Got the fucking nigga in the bushes. <laughs> Let me see your money. What you got? Bro, that's like fifteen dollars. You fucked the nigga in the bushes for fifteen? Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, folks. The video you just saw is not uncommon. I've seen this movie before. In fact, if you go look at Snow Crash, was it Snow Crash? Snowfall. The series Snowfall, especially the third season, where crack really takes over. And you see the girls out there doing what they need to do to get the crack. Now it's not going to be about getting drugs. It's going to be about survival. And what you just saw, I've seen many times in my youth. And like Yogi Berra says, this is deja vu all over again. Or this is back to the future. We've already seen this play happen. So what can I say? I told you guys this was coming. I told you guys this was going to happen. I told you, unless they can get this economy straightened out, it's going to get worse. They do not have enough jobs for women. They do not have enough jobs for women that are capable, much less women that are incapable. And I'm not saying that this young girl was incapable, but you got a whole lot of people that are falling through the cracks. And the only safety net that they have is this. And whether it's to support themselves or supplement themselves, uh, I've seen both. And this is what's going to happen. And I've already seen women on the street in places that shouldn't be on the street. You know, the main streets that are off the track where you see women walking aimlessly. This is the kind of renegade, as, I say, as Warren Lance says, renegade hoes that are actually going to be out there on the street walking the beat, looking not to earn, you know, $150 or $100 or $20 really to look, be earning 15, 10, 5 just to eat and I always said that uh, when women come back to the table when black women are humble you may not like the way that they get humble you may not like what you see and you may have an empathetic ear or empathetic heart for them so a lot of guys 2, 3, 4 years ago were saying no mercy that they needed to learn a lesson that the situation needed to be, in a sense, so bad that black women have to come back to the table and, and as Obsidian used to say, course trade with their men. And I don't think that Obsidian or anybody else thought that this would be the catalyst or it would get this bad. And I know people didn't think it would get this bad this quickly because when I said that the coffee girls were coming, where sex would be uh, the price of coffee, price of a Starbucks coffee, which a brother of mine said his Starbucks uh, coffee price was like $8.88. And we've seen the price of coffee go lower than that, right? <laughs> Down to, you know, the, the McDonald's coffee for less than a dollar. Okay, <laughs> We've seen that. But coffee girls and this kind of behavior, this kind of activity is an economic issue. It's not a moral issue. And a lot of people try to put morality on this particular happening or this particular circumstance. And it's not, it's an economic issue. And I've actually been pointing this stuff out by showing you other places where this has already happened. I pointed you to Greece that went through or are still going through economic stress. And the price of sex went from, you know, 100 euros during normal times. And 100 euros was the base, down to 10. And if the girl's on drugs, less than that. And if uh, Warren Lance, the pimp guy, is correct about renegades, 
you're going to have a whole lot of women that are not used to selling sex or not used to selling their bodies. And they're going to have a whole lot of psychological issues, which is why pimps don't like renegade hoes, because they have psychological issues that they can't overcome. And renegades, uh, without out there by themselves, they're unattached are not built for the street, they're not built for the track. So you're gonna have a whole lot of women that are not built to be diesels, out there being diesels. What is that going to do for the rest of the society? Now, it, it damn near wrecked the society, uh, black the black community back in the 80s. And I would say that it was barely a little bit more than 10% of the women that caused it. And I probably would say it was even less of the, of the women out there that caused this kind of behavior, it caused this kind of disruption in the black community. What happens when it's 10 or 15 percent of the whole society, of 10 or 15 percent of all women, they're actually engaged in this kind of behavior. And what's going to happen to the whole society is as the price of vagina gets pulled down because it doesn't just affect the bottom, it affects the top. So just because you are a, a rich suburban housewife, or a potential rich suburban housewife, the pull of gravity of sex being cheap is gonna affect how much that man is willing to pay for you, how much that man is willing to sponsor you. Prices are always determined by the floor, not the, not the top. Just like a big screen TV, okay? The, the price of a big screen TV is not determined by how much they can charge for one or the top end, it's determined by the bottom end. It's hard to justify a $60,000 big screen TV when you can go to Walmart and get one that's within 50, 60% of it for like $300. That gap has to be made up somewhere. And so the coffee girls are going to affect relationships. In fact, it's already affecting relationships. Black women have done almost a 180 within a year because of this. Now, at first they didn't believe it was real. First they were defiant. First they were telling uh, Kevin Samuels and black men where to go a year later they're here at the table trying to figure it out they're here at the table trying to learn those same IG models that would have not taken less than $3,000 for you to sleep with them they're giving it away to Myron and Fresh and Fit just to be able to advertise themselves on their show that's where it's going that's what's happening and basically the women are going to flood the market they're not going to start on the street. They're going to start on IG first and work their way down to, to Twitter and then OnlyFans. And then if they can't get anything shaken there, then they're going to hit the street. The street is the last place. But what about the women that can't get on IG? That don't look good enough to be on Twitter. That damn sure don't look good enough to be on OnlyFans in charge. Where are they going to go? Exactly. Exactly, in the bushes for $15. If COVID comes back and they can't get into strip clubs, the stripper's gonna have to hit the street for $15. Here's what it is, folks. Don't believe me. People say that I scare them because a lot of times what I'm saying is accurate. So I always wonder about that. Now you guys can tell me, would you rather me be scary and accurate or entertaining and inaccurate? I always wondered about that because the guys that are entertaining and inaccurate, they make way more money. <laughs> they make way more money. They got way more subs and they do way, way better than I. So maybe there is a market for telling people what they want to hear instead of what they need to hear. But fortunately, I'm a Gnostic and I am bound by my faith and my code not to do that. But lucky for you. Because trust and believe I'd be on the other side, like fresh and fit, hustling for dollars, okay? Anywho, let me get off of here. This is BGS out, and I'll see you guys on the next one.